Howdy! For part 4 of partial fraction decomposition, let's talk about how, when, and why to do polynomial long division. You will do polynomial long division every time when the highest degree on top is greater than or equal to the highest degree on bottom. Now, before we do polynomial long division, Let's uh, take a trip back to what, third grade, fourth grade, second grade, whenever we did poly or, or just regular long division, those were good times. I, I had a pretty good elementary, not gonna lie. So, let's say I wanted to do, I don't know, let's do 47 divided by 2. <laughs> when was the last time you saw like that division symbol? That's been forever, right? It's probably gonna be, you've probably seen this 47 over 2. Now, the way that we did this, is the bigger number, the top number, well not the bigger number, the top number is what's divided by 2. Now pay attention to my language, because I'm going to use the exact same language whenever doing polynomial long division, okay? So what I'm asking myself is I'm taking a look at this 2, a 2, and I'm looking at the 4 first. Now what do I need to multiply 2 by in order to get 4? Well, I need to multiply 2 by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. We would subtract that, and these would cancel, and then you would drop down the 7. Now, how many times do you, what do you need to multiply 2 by to get to a 7? We need to multiply it by 3, right? 2 goes into 7 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. We subtract that, 7 minus 6 is 1. Now, how many times, or what do I need to multiply 2 by to get a 1? You can't, right? You, there's nothing you can multiply 2 by to get a 1. You'd have to divide, right? And so, what this is, this is your remainder. And so your final answer, the way that you would write it, is you'd write this as whatever is on top, which is 23, plus my remainder, which is 1 over what was originally on bottom. And so 47 divided by 2 is 23 plus 1 half. I'm going to do the exact same thing but now for polynomial long division, okay? So let's do x to the fourth plus x minus four, that's on top, and it's gonna be divided by x squared minus one. Okay, so I'm focusing on this x squared, and I'm first focusing on this x to the fourth. And I need to ask myself, what do I need to multiply x squared by to get x to the fourth? Well, I need to multiply it by an x squared, right? And so x squared times x squared, is x to the fourth, but if you have extra stuff over here, make sure you multiply it into that as well. x squared times a negative one is a negative x squared, and then we're gonna subtract these. Now, when dealing with polynomials, I actually don't like subtracting, because if you have a negative, minus a negative, and it's just, it can get kind of confusing. So instead, what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but the way that I like to do it, is I change that minus into a plus. However, when you change that into a plus, make sure you change the sign to every term here. That way, when I see x to the fourth minus x to the fourth, that's going to cancel. And then when I do x minus 4 plus x squared, that's just, well, x squared plus x minus 4. Cool. Now that I've done that, let's see how many times x squared goes into x squared. Well, x squared goes into x squared one time. Plus 1. 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1, and we're going to be subtracting. And in situations like this, I hate subtracting because, like with the minus, make that a plus. And then just go bang, bang, change the sign. That way it's real easy. x squared minus x squared, boom, done. x and, well, that's just x. And then minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. Now, how many times does x squared go into x? It doesn't you'd have to divide. Therefore, this is our remainder. And so, if I wanted to integrate x to the fourth plus x minus four all over x squared minus one, which you would do, this is equal to the integral of, well, it's what was, remember, what did we do here? Was well, originally on top, so it said x squared plus one, plus my remainder, a remainder x minus 3 over what was originally on bottom, which is x squared minus 1. Now, notice the integral of x squared plus 1, man, we got that. That's not too bad. But, in order to do this integral, we had to do partial fractions. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up into x squared plus 1 plus the integral of x minus 3 over x squared minus 1 is a reducible quadratic. You can factor that, and if you can factor a quadratic, factor it. x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now, we know that the integral of x squared plus 1, that's just 1 third x cubed plus x. Plus, off to the side, let's go ahead and actually compute this integral here. Or at the very least, let's uh, uh, decompose it. Okay, And so the way I decompose this, notice I have an x plus 1, x minus 1. Both those parentheses are linear. 1 less than a linear is an arbitrary constant on top. So I'm going to have a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 1 is equal to that x minus 3 over x plus 1 times x minus 1. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by the original denominator, x plus 1 times x minus 1, and distribute that into each fraction. So with the a, notice that on bottom this x plus 1 would cancel with the x plus 1, so all I'd be left with is x minus 1. For the b, the x minus 1's cancel, so I'm just going to be left with an x plus 1. And then when I multiply it here on the right side, the entire denominator cancels, so it's just x minus 3. Okay? Um, now I can get I can get actually both freebies, because at x equals negative 1, the b is going to go away. And so when I plug negative 1 into every x, minus 1 minus 1, I have a minus 2a, is equal to minus 1 minus 3, that's minus 4, get that a is equal to 2. And then at x equals positive 1, the a is not going to go away when I plug 1 into there. So plugging 1 into everything, 1 plus 1, that's 2, so 2b. And here, 1 minus 3 is a negative 2. And so b is negative 1. And so now that I have that, now I can do plus the integral of a over x plus 1 2 over x plus 1, plus b over x minus 1, so it's going to be plus a negative 1 over x minus 1. And now we can finally integrate that. Therefore, our final answer is going to be 1 third x cubed plus x plus 2 times the natural log of x plus 1 minus the ln of x minus 1 plus c. That's how you're going to deal with your polynomial long division. Remember, you do polynomial long division when the highest power on top is greater than or equal to the highest power on bottom. From there, do your polynomial long division, and whatever it's going to be, it's going to be whatever's on top, plus your remainder over what was originally on bottom. And after you've done that, if you can integrate this stuff straight up, perfect, great, do it. But sometimes you might need to do a partial fraction after that. And if, that, and if you do need to do that, I like to do that scratch work off to the side. That way I just keep my integral you know, nice and neat and nice and aligned. And that is how you deal with partial fractions.